Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, JCOT, is a university of global excellence premised on quality training, research, innovation, and entrepreneurship for development. Her mission is to produce innovative, responsive, and relevant solutions for socio-economic transformation. My name is Professor Victoria Wamboingomi. I am the Vice Chancellor of Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Um, it gives me great pleasure to invite all of you to the 7th Agritech um, Virtual Exhibition Conference, um, which will be held here in Jomo Kenyatta um, University. As you know, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology is in the forefront of doing scientific research and innovation. And as a result of this um, uh, very um, important uh, task that we do, we also involve ourselves in extension, where we take our discoveries, our innovations, and our ideas out to the people. As, as a result of this, if I may give a few examples, uh, we have reached out to Makweni County, where we have had a very interesting project to do with mango uh, value chain. And this has benefited the people there, including the women group, the youth, and the disabled. In addition to that, in Kiambu County, we also have a very big project on banana, again, production of bananas and processing of bananas uh, with, the, with the county office, uh, especially the women rep. And this is uh, uh, quite a success. Uh, in addition to that, we have many other projects that we are doing which benefit the local people, like in Mombasa with the coconut. Uh, we hold the coconut research chair, and we are doing quite a lot of work uh, looking at the value chain of the coconut in Mombasa. Just to name a few uh, amongst many others, uh, we do have a lot of other projects that we are doing, uh, maybe also at another level, in the area of IT, ICT, uh, with Baringo, uh, with Bomet, and uh, Kakamega, Vihiga, and many other parts of Kenya, where JKUAT uh, is extending their innovations and their research and their ideas. But... Um, I wish to welcome you all to the exhibition where you will be able to see some of um, the things that we will showcase. Karibuni sana, and I hope you will enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Since its inception, JCOT has been at the forefront in fostering a culture of research and innovation among faculty and students. The university is, for example, home to the Manufacturing Research Chair on Coconut Value Addition, the Cassava Virology Lab, the EU-funded Food Fortification Lab, and the Innovation Prototyping Center, among others. In keeping with the theme of the 7th Agritech Africa Virtual Exhibition, JQUAT, through the Directorate of Extension Services, researchers and exhibitors are showcasing a number of cutting-edge novelties geared towards agricultural productivity, food security, and nutrition. Hello everybody. My name is Professor Mary Abukutsa Onyango. I am a professor of horticulture and uh, deputy vice chancellor in charge of research, production, and extension at the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology in Kenya. As a university, we pride ourselves in uh, various things, key to which is we are a leading university in teaching, research, innovation, and entrepreneurship. And we believe that uh, what we will show in this virtual platform will go a long way to contribute to the development of Kenya and Africa and even the world. As a university, we understand that Kenya has a vision 2030, and out of that, they have carved out four major agenda, one of which is agriculture and food security. 
And this exhibition is actually focusing to contribute to uh, agriculture and food security for Kenya and for the world. And we are sharing actually a number of innovations that have come out of the university so that they can be used to make the world a better place to live in. And we believe that as it is articulated in Vision 2030, the youth innovation, um, science and technology will play a key role to ensure that we have enough food and nobody goes hungry in Kenya and in the world. I therefore would like to urge all the stakeholders, including the government and private sector, to be able to create an enabling environment for all of us, especially the youth, to focus in developing technologies in agriculture and food security, because many of our youth think that agriculture is for the old and the poor. But with the technologies, we know that they have a big part to play, especially in Africa, because Africa has the largest population of young people. So I urge every young person to take this serious and play their part so that they can be able to be innovative and be able to provide solutions in this time and age so that we have a better place to live in. Welcome to this virtual uh, platform and I hope you enjoy, you are most welcome. Thank you. My name is Patrick Kavagi Amaheno, based as technologist at the Department of Food Culture and a research assistant based to the African indigenous uh, vegetables. This is a project that was started long away in 1991 by Professor Mary Abukusa. We had a range of issues that had been raised by farmers and uh, this was after we disseminated questionnaires to farmers in the uh, western part of this country. And what came out clearly was lack of clean planting materials, that is the seeds for selected uh, African indigenous vegetables. And now we had to collect the seeds of all the African indigenous vegetables that were considered to be priority ones, and then came to do bulking from the university. And then now the same seeds were now sent back to the farmers for them now to start their enterprises. This has come up clearly because now the, the most farmers through the community-based organizations and aggregation of farmers have adapted now the commercial aspect of African indigenous vegetables, more so after embracing the innovation of how to dry the vegetables during that time where the production is high. My name is Alfred Masaba Wanzala. I'm a research assistant in Africa Indigenous Vegetable. The project is all about ensuring that it provides quality seeds to farmers and also trains farmers at different level to ensure that they produce quality indigenous vegetables. We do the training starting at the primary school level up to the old farmers or the farmers at the field. At the primary level, we engage pupils in 4K clubs to ensure that they know quality farming at the lower level. We provide them with the quality seeds and also planting leaflets to guide them through the farming. At the farm level, we train farmers also on the spacing and management of indigenous vegetables at the farm and we also provide the seeds to them. At the university level, when we are doing research, we engage uh, university students both at undergraduate and postgraduate post level uh, in different research and also provide them with planting materials and we guide them throughout up to the harvesting and post-harvesting management. The project has managed to train over 10,000 farmers countrywide in different counties and we keep contact with them to ensure that all their needs is well catered for when it comes to production and management of indigenous vegetables. I'm Dr. Cecilia Mwell, a senior research fellow working at the Institute for Biotechnology Research, whereby in the Institute we are doing research on animals, plants and microorganisms. And our main aim is to tap the genetic resource in these 
different organisms to improve their production so that we can help the farmers to have better yields and even uh, plants which can withstand different harsh conditions like drought and so on. We do have the tissue culture technology and the tissue culture technology, its main aim is to multiply in mass. Like we have the commercial banana production whereby we are producing plantlets to farmers. These plantlets have a high figure. They can grow very fast within a year. They are ready for harvesting. And also they are free from diseases that is from bacteria and fungal. So we give them quality plantlets and in quantity. We also have the coconut, eh? tissue culture coconut project. It's also aimed at producing in mass. We also have the passion fruits. We also have um, aloe vera. With the coconut, our coconut in cost is diminishing with time. We have uh, some diseases which are clearing the coconut plantations in the coast. So we are also trying to produce coconut plantlets in mass for farmers in the coast region so that they can be able to have enough planting material and be able to continue with their production. When we come to other plants, we have another project on doom palm. Doom palm is a semi-arid plant. It belongs to the coconut family. What we are doing with this plant, we are trying not only to do the mass production, we also we are trying to screen for genes which can withstand drought and salinity. When we identify these genes, we will be in a position to introduce these genes in other crops like maize and the cereal crops, which are the main eh, food crops for, the, for Kenya and also Africa. And then we'll be able to plant these uh, crops in very saline conditions and also they, can, they might need very little water for them to produce. So we are also looking for drought tolerant varieties. We also have the organic farming. Farmers come here, we train them on how to make organic manure, organic biopesticide from the farm. Also we have the mushroom program. The mushroom program is mainly set to produce uh, spawns, seeds for mushroom. So when farmers come here, we take them through the process of mushroom farming until to the market stage. So they can, how they can plant, how to set the house, because there are some conditions for the house where the mushroom should be grown. We train them on how to do that, and then how to grow from the starter, all that. And also we tell them the different challenges, like if you see this, this might be a big bacterial infection, which is a Affecting your mushroom, you need to apply ABCD. And also we train them not only to, to, to prevent, but to control. But prevention is better than cure, so we insist on prevention. Yeah, my name is Dr. Paul Kinoti. I'm a lecturer at the Department of Horticulture and Food Security at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. I'm currently handling a project entitled the Biosnail Project which aims at trying to breed snails for economic purposes. Mainly we are focusing on uh, breeding from the start, where you collect the snail, you rear them until they are ready for, for reproduction, and then from there the cycle continues. Thereafter we also venture into value addition, where we generate major products like uh, snail cream, snail lotion, fertilizer and uh, animal feeds like uh, poultry feed and uh, pig feeds and uh, among others. Basically this project was established to try and uh, sensitize or uh, educate farmers that uh, snails are not just uh, animals that are thus destructive, but they can be put into economic use. From this, yes. There is a report about 180 million euros on cosmetic industry in Italy. From this? From slime alone. 
I'm telling you there is a lot of money. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Snails are small or micro livestock and uh, because of the fact that they are not labor intensive, they are uh, Herbivorous, so they can feed on all types of vegetation. We have more than 500 species of plants or vegetables that can be consumed by the snails. And the space of the land being very small, meaning you can even do it in urban area, make the business very viable in terms of space, in terms of labor, and in terms of capital investment. We have also the extension. Uh, where we also extend our knowledge, skills and technical aspect to our farmers, either locally and even outside our borders. And uh, we normally do our training uh, here, having been granted that permission by the Kenya Wildlife Service. And uh, we normally do it after every three months. So far we have done the first one uh, because of uh, the impact of COVID we had to stop. We are scheduling to do another training uh, next week uh, from 25th to 27th. In terms of uh, farmers' capacity, we have trained about 25, the first lot. And uh, we are targeting 30 or even 40 next time and even more. So there is an opportunity and we are likely to impart this knowledge down to the farmers. Genius of research on insects. So insects is what I know. Sijui kitu ingine. Unajua tu mambo adudu. Adudu, different insects, crickets, yeah. termites, grasshoppers, locusts, mm. as food. Yeah. So, what wanapenda kuniita insect man. Insect man. Mm. And uh, it seems that uh, you took a lot of interest in crickets. Yes. Uh, <coughs> as far as uh, comparing to other insects. Yeah. Why why crickets? Actually Mwanzo we si kuanza na crickets mm. nilianza na termites mm. kumbe kumbe hao mm. wenye wana fly when it rains yeah. yeah so that's uh, i i studied the termites for my masters and my phd yes where we harvested a lot of them from western kenya and fed children we fed 550 children in kakamega and mumias mm. for one year on kumbe kumbe and then evaluated how their growth and uh, development is happening as a result of Kumbe Kumbe. Yeah. But then later, uh, after I finished my PhD, I realized uh, it's actually easier to study and farm crickets as compared to termites. Termites ni wagumu kidogo. Mana wale wakona queen. Queen ambaye is very intelligent. You've gone that far. Yeah. Now, uh, kabla ya tujaenda ndani sana, mm. wacha tuzungumzie tu hawa chenene ama nyenje kwa Kiswahili wanavyojulikana sana ama crickets. Mm. Tunawajua sana hawa ni wadudu ambao mara nyingi wako mm. kule kwenye fields, the field insects. Mm. And um, that's what we know them for. Now, what is the origin of mm. cricket rearing mm. and how far mm. ama, ama when did the journey begin in Kenya? In, in Kenya, the journey for cricket mm. started around 20, 2012. Mm -hmm. That's when uh, we started getting interest that we can actually farm them. But Kitambo, uh, crickets were eaten. If you look at uh, traditional knowledge among people in, in Western Kenya, among the Lus and the Luyas, mm -hmm. crickets were one of the insects they were consuming among, together with termites and ants and uh, other insects. Yeah. So, in terms of eating them, we didn't start in 2012 because they had been eaten before. But in terms of starting to develop farming technologies, we started around 2012. Uh, and like I mentioned, we started by harvesting them from the shambas. You, you listen, you hear one making noise, you pick it, hear another one making noise, you pick it, bring them together. And then they start a colony, start a family. And so we have, we have built it over years. We started by using rud rudimentary things, put, farming them in, basket, in buckets and karais. Yeah. But now you can see we have facilities, we have farming models that we can actually do commercial farming. We have now moved from that small rudimentary way of farming to commercial ventures, where I can say I'm investing my hundreds of thousands to get 
money at the end of the day. At the end of the day. Yeah, because we are not looking at just household consumption. No, 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 no. We are actually looking at industrial level consumption, where I can sell my one 500 kilos of crickets to an industry, to Unga Limited, to yeah. make flour, mm -hmm. or to another anim an animal feed manufacturer to make animal feed. Okay. Yeah. My name is Wawer Mwangi. I'm a professor, I'm an associate professor in the Department of Computing, in the School of Computing and uh, Information Technology. Now we have a project uh, on uh, creating a maze information uh, repository. We call it uh, MFIR, uh, Maze Farming Information Repository, which uh, aims at uh, creating a, um, a knowledge base. Uh, of uh, all information related to maize. So um, we, we started this some time back. We discussed with uh, several stakeholders and even other institutions actually uh, like IHUB uh, and uh, many others here in Kenya. And then uh, we conceptualized the idea and we were supported uh, by the JKU Art um, Division of uh, research, production and extension and uh, uh, we have also been supported by now currently the Africa AI Japan project. So basically what the project does is that um, it, it looks at uh, categories of uh, information related to the entire cycle of uh, farming from uh, you know rad preparation, seeds, uh, the selection, and then uh, planting, going all the way up to uh, weeding and harvesting. And then um, it, 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 it creates a database and it looks at what farmers are likely to worry about. And then um, puts that information, for example, a variety, for example, if you are in a certain zone, if you are in a dollet, uh, what kind of uh, maybe maize should you plant at the lower side or the upper side. So we put all that kind of information in a database and then uh, we create uh, several modules. Uh, one of the modules is an SMS uh, based module. So through a company called um, Africa Stocking which gives that service, uh, we have been able to get a short code uh, 20880 through which uh, somebody uh, or farmers can query our database and then they get answers on, for example, varieties, uh, things to do with pests, things to do with those planting, and many other. My name is Dr. Vera Michael. I'm the general manager for the Food Technology Center, FOTEC. And the FOTEC was established by the university in the year 2007 with the mandate to provide training for sm small and medium enterprises and also to provide uh, uptake of technologies that arise from the student practicals, student thesis, and student projects. The Food Technology Center has been working very hard to generate products for the university community and for the larger market. Some of the products include yogurt, which we have generated here in our workshop uh, with different flavors, uh, tomato ketchup products, uh, juices, cordial concentrates, uh, which can be found in our university community and also which you can find in the market out there. Our biggest driver now is training programs and training activities. And in this, we are putting a lot of emphasis on safety, food safety, which has become a big problem in Kenya. And we are doing a lot of food safety training, uh, generating the gap between uh, what the SMEs are producing versus what Kenya Bureau of Standards requires. And in that regard, the Fortex Center is able to incubate these businesses so that they can narrow that gap and they can have their products uh, accepted uh, at the Kenya Bureau of Standards. At also Fortex, we do training of SMEs to improve on value addition so that they can reduce post harvest losses of their products. This is mainly targeted for SMEs in uh, counties and also SMEs uh, that operate around the university community. Right now, we are taking advantage of the different MOUs that the university has signed with county governments from Kiambu to Vihiga. And these 
uh, MOUs enable us to work with the SMEs in those counties. We look at we we, we don't have a predefined uh, solution to these SMEs. We go into in, we listen to what the problems they have. We have the technical expertise. Fortec is very unique because we are able to tap into the expertise of the universities, the researchers, the students, the professors, uh, the technologists, the technicians, and offer solutions to the SMEs at the county level and also around the university community. We also have an open door policy where any SME can come in with their problem, present it to the Fortec Center, and we sit down, we brainstorm, and we generate a solution for the SMEs. We are also an income generating unit for the university where we sell these products and we, by selling these products, we generate some income that is able to be absorbed by the university as extra revenue. Above all, we are also able to incubate technologies. Our university students are always doing projects, they are doing theses, and some of the projects they generate technologies, they generate new products. When, they, when we notice a new product that a student has generated in their project or thesis, we take it up as Fortec and try to commercialize that new product or that new technology. This way, we are able to move the product or the technology from the university out there into the community and into uh, the SMEs for, for better uptake. Most of these technologies, we exhibit them during, uh, we exhibit them during uh, exhibitions and shows uh, where people can come and have a look and when they get interested in a student's uh, technology then that gives us a leeway to be able to follow up on the SMEs and provide them with the necessary technology for, 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 for their processes. Last but not least, we also develop processes and equipment and machines uh, which we also share with the different uh, SMEs, from extraction, you say uh, extraction machines, uh, to sieving, uh, grading, and so on. All these technologies we are also able to share with uh, the SMEs for the uptake. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Okoz uh, Evelyn. I'm a lecturer and a researcher in food science department. And today we are showing you um, value addition of fruits in our department. Um, we have two sections. We have a production unit and we have the research. Uh, I'll start with uh, two of our research uh, we are currently doing. We are adding value to uh, a wild fruit called cactus and out of it we have several products. We make the pulp out of it and out of this one we can make our juice. We can also make um, some wine out of it. We can also make some jam out of it. And, and uh, so uh, we are working with the farmers from the dry areas, the Laikipia, the northeastern place, because the, the fruit grows widely and vastly there. Secondly, we have another wild fruit, which is called gooseberry, also growing in most regions of the country, central Rift Valley, and also northeastern and eastern. So out of it also, we are adding value to several products. We have the juice out of it, as you can see, a pretty healthy product. We can have both the ready to drink and concentrate. We can also have jam out of it, and we can also make very good wine out of it, okay? Um, and so in our, our production or in our innovation, we are working with the farmers in these regions to make sure that all is not lost because these fruits are growing widely in the bush, yet they, are, they can make gold out of it. And uh, our aim is to make sure that uh, we work with community and add value to their lives, make cottage uh, industries out of them and make a livelihood a livelihood out of it. Thank you very much for today. Welcome. I'm Professor Bernard Ikua. I'm the research chairholder for universities, uh, research chair on manufacturing, the only research chair on manufacturing in, uh, in Kenya. I am also the deputy vice chancellor in charge of administration at JKUAT. 
I'll talk about the manufacturing research chair that we are having in JKUAT, which is a running project uh, focusing on the coconut uh, value chain. We are carrying out research in very various areas of, of coconut. Uh, the various areas include the food products, food and beverages. We also have uh, cosmetics and uh, beauty products. We have energy uh, value chain also. We also have machineries and tooling. And we also have biomass, fabrics, and textile. All these are streams within the manufacturing research chair. And we are trying to improve the livelihoods of the uh, uh, farmers and small scale enterprises in the coast region who are dealing with the coconut, uh, uh, coconut crop. Uh, what we are focusing on mainly is adding value and also making, uh, constructing machineries to help them in processing of the coconut. Uh, so we, have, we are also doing some training, quite a bit of training in, uh, in the area of standardization, quality, uh, packaging and so on for uh, players, uh, mainly small and micro enterprises in the coconut value chain. And we are doing this uh, mainly in uh, three, uh, three counties, that is Mombasa, Kuale and Kilivi County uh, uh, in the coast region. That's what we are doing. Uh, we are the output that we are having, also training at a master's level. So far, we have been able to develop a lot of equipment uh, for uh, value addition of coconut. Some of the equipment here include uh, stars, including mixers for, uh, for cosmetics and beauty products, which we, have also, we are also piloting in the Kuala, uh, in the Kuala, uh, Kuala County. We have also made uh, equipment uh, for, uh, for mechanization of the husking of the coconut uh, uh, fruit and that has been taken very well by, some, uh, by the farmers in the coast region. This we have also disseminated in the coast region and they are continuing uh, 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 utilizing them. Uh, we have also developed a decorticator uh, which we are now running and refining and this is going to be very, very helpful for textile uh, uh, processing and for cocoa peat production. Cocoa peat is very, very important in, the, uh, uh, in agriculture, especially for horticulture, uh, horticulture use. So, and it's a good byproduct of the husks of the coconut and we're actually producing. At, out of it also, out of, when we produce, uh, we bring out the cocoa peat also as a byproduct, it's a byproduct to fibers that are also taken uh, out of the husks. We, we are producing the fibers also, and we are helping to produce fibers so that they can also be used to make, to make other products such as uh, doormats, uh, ropes, and so on. And uh, uh, the other thing is the other uh, product is the bricketing for energy, bricketing equipment. We realize that coconut shells also, they are a very important source of energy. Uh, for use by uh, small scale uh, in ho in households for energy. So this, uh, we, are, we are making briquettes and we have also disseminated uh, briquetting machines for, for, uh, for use in the, uh, in, in, in the, cocoa, in the uh, by SMEs in the coast region. All this we have actually done. We have also, I, have, I think I mentioned earlier, we have trained quite a number of uh, players, small scale players, uh, about a hundred of them so far, and we are still going to train many more. And these technologies that we are disseminating also have been received very well. They have helped to improve uh, the livelihoods. They have helped to in, uh, improve the productivity and ensure quality and consist consistency in the, uh, in the products that they are making. And we are receiving very good reports about it as JKU and we, we are very proud of it. Now, this manufacturing research chair is actually supported by the National Commission for Science, Technology and Innovation, that is NACOSTI, and also with our partner, IDRC, that's the Canadian uh, Development Research uh, a Corporation. So this is a, a collaborative research. We also, within uh, JKU, at, we, within, the, within Kenya, we also collaborate with a number of institutions, including the NATS and Aerocrop Directorate, which is under AFA. We are also collaborating with uh, Moi University, who are very strong in uh, textiles. We are collaborating with, uh, also with Multimedia University. But most of the uh, players are within JKUAT. So we are working together 
Uh, we are multidisciplinary, as I mentioned. We have chemistry, we have food products also. Sorry, I didn't mention that. We are also looking at the food value chain for the coconut uh, products. Uh, we are looking at uh, the oil, that is virgin, uh, VC of virgin coconut oil. Uh, we are analyzing and also looking at different mecha mechanisms for production of the oil to ensure that the, it is oil that it can be, that is uh, fit for consumption. We are also looking at the fatty acids and many other things. Um, my name is Joyce Chepngeno, a PhD candidate on the Baobab project. And this is a project funded by the German Federal Ministry of Agriculture and in partnership with uh, several other universities in Africa. In Kenya, it is here in Jomo Kenyatta University as well as um, Pwani University. Um, in this project, we are looking at the diversity and the nutritional profile of this baobab fruit. And because it grows in the arid and semi-arid regions where we often have cases of hunger and malnutrition in these regions. And that is why we went for baobab that can supplement the incomes of these communities. So we get these fruits from the baobab trees across the region. Uh, that is mostly in Kitui and uh, Kilifi counties, but it also grows in other arid areas, only that our study has been focused on the two counties. Um, when we get the fruits from the trees, we crack them and we get this powder, which we've done a little profiling uh, and we found that it is very rich in vitamin C and other antioxidants. And that means it confers uh, health benefits to the consumers. Also in this project, we are looking at, we looked at improving the trees or propagating baobab so that we have uh, f trees that can get fruits or yield fruits within a short period of time and that has been worked on by um, the horticulture team. We are also looking at the value chain uh, for baobab and looking at it in terms of economies. How much are we able to trade within our country? Uh, what products are we developing from baobab to actually market and probably get a chance to do export for them? So um, we currently have students working on uh, aggregation chain of baobab and the project is actually funding um, a demonstration site where we can have farmers or people producing these trees aggregating the trees, the fruits, and then uh, cracking them using the approved or the food safe procedures to extract the powder and then we can uh, trade in them. Also, um, safety of the products is currently being looked at because of the handling protocols that go into it and uh, we are having positive results on developing critical control points to have a product that is safe and shelf stable. Thank you. Okay, my name is Alex Miner. I am the project coordinator of HOSA, Horticulture Students Association. And my role in HOSA is I coordinate projects, I manage projects, and I see for the best projects that we can do as HOSA. So we try to find out the gap in the agriculture, in the agriculture markets in HOSA, and then we find projects that can be able to fill up that gap so that we can be able to, to meet the needs of farmers. Yeah. So Horticulture Students Association, this is a, a, an organization of students, students who have come together to, to be able to enrich themselves with skills in the horticulture sector. Like we try to do practicals, more that are not offered in the course, whereby we, we deal with the plants from propagation, seedlings, to the management, growing, production, and even fruiting. And we try to identify the key things that farmers need to identify 
when they're growing up. We also try to, to venture out into businesses, including a propagation unit and urban gardening, where we try to give people the chance to grow their own food in their own balconies, in their own small spaces, and we try to enrich vertical farming. Yeah. What is this business venture? The business is, okay, so in the seedling propagation unit, we try and uh, most people don't get certified seedlings, like seedlings which are not yet, they're not assorted, assorted. So we try to fill that gap and we produce very healthy seedlings, that well nurtured and well fed, and we sell to farmers so that we can plant them in their farms. And in the vertical gardening or the urban gardens, we try to build systems like capillary wicks, hydroponics, these are, these are systems that are easily set up and they can be set up in a very small space. So we set them up in, the, in farmers, in, in homes, in rooftops, in balconies, where they can feed the family. And the clients are happy with us. They're happy with the work that we're doing. They're able to produce vegetables that are not even sprayed, that they know where they're coming from. They know what they're producing, they know what they're eating. They don't like buying things from the market. So they are glad that you have ventured into this business and you are helping them, as well as helping us. Yeah. So JQuart has given us a platform. It has given us uh, this association. It has really helped us to reach more people. And we get many calls through JQuart. Yeah, because we are recognized as an institution of higher learning, and what to do here is actually higher than what a normal farmer would do. My name is Pramila Nekesa Mwibanda, a former member of Horticultural Students Association, HOSA, which is a horticulturalist club uh, founded inside JQUAT, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Currently, I am a partner uh, at Urban Smart Gardeners, HOSA, which is a company that was started with my colleague, Joash Njani, and our main aim was to at least tackle the issue of food security, whereby we realized that uh, most people in the urban centers don't really have access to clean, fresh, accessible foods. Therefore, they used to come to us and maybe see some few setups which we had set up and were interested in having them uh, re refurbished at their place. So we decided to at least approach one of the members who are interested and they wanted at least a garden. So we went and did the first setup, which was around uh, late 2019. That was our first uh, venture. But as the corona came by earlier this year, 2020, we got more people uh, needing the gardens. Therefore, we've expanded and at least have done several vertical gardens for people mostly in Nairobi, the outskirts of Nairobi. So during the corona period, most people couldn't really go to the markets because they were closed or maybe they were scared because uh, they were exposed to the COVID virus. Therefore, they will seek to gain uh, farm, uh, kitchen gardens in their own backyard so that they can get their food direct from the source. Also, another reason why people are venturing more into the gardens is because they really had more time. So they realize rather than spending their time uh, just sitting around, maybe watching movies and all that, they decided maybe why can I start a garden and do the management of the gardens. And for us, the youth, we realized that we have idle time because the schools were closed and we couldn't really go to class anymore. So it was a way of the students being able to earn something instead of just sitting around at home and at least uh, learn a new skill and also have an impact to the society by feeding them and also playing a role in ensuring food security is solved in the country, Kenya. Also, uh, through this venture, at least the, the university gave us a platform at least to be exposed to some tools and knowledge and we were able to at least gain these skills and now we are able to go outside there and start this business as our own. It's still very young, but we believe that with time we are going to have an impact in the society and build uh, as many gardens as possible in Kenya and also handle the management because we do the setup, we do the management and even we do the the repairs if necessary.